This is a tutorial on integer exponents. Up until now, we've always dealt with whole number exponents. If we have 2 squared, that's equal to 2 times 2, or 4. 2 cubed would be equal to 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. But what if we have a negative number in a power, or a 0 in a power? Well, whenever we have a negative exponent, that just means this term is in the denominator. So 2 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 2 squared. And that's equal to 1 over 2 times 2, or 1 fourth. So 2 to the negative 2 then is just equal to 1 fourth. If we had 2 to the negative third, well that's the same as 1 over 2 to the third. And that would be equal to 1 over 2 times 2 times 2, or 1 eighth. So whenever you have a negative exponent, that just means that that whole term goes in the denominator. Now what if we have a zero power? Well, as long as our base here doesn't equal zero, then any number other than zero to the zero power is just equal to one. So seven to the zero would be equal to one. 105 to the zero power, well that's equal to one. Negative seven to the zero power, that's also equal to one. So let's go over these rules that we've learned. If we have a base that's not equal to zero, and that base is put to the zero power, then it's equal to one. So any number other than zero to the zero power is always equal to one. And if we have a base, again, that's not zero, and it's put to a negative exponent, well then that term goes in the denominator. So a to the negative n is the same as one over a to the n. So let's take what we've learned and try to evaluate these expressions. If we have x to the minus 3 and we're told that x is equal to 3, well, x to the negative 3 is equal to 1 over x cubed. And then if x is equal to 3, we just plug that in for x, so this is equal to 1 over 3 to the third. And that's equal to 1 over 3 times 3 times 3. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and times 3 again would be 27. So x to the negative 3, when x is equal to 3, is just 1 27th. Let's look at our next example. We have x to the 0, y to the minus 1, and we're told that x is equal to 4, and y is equal to 10. Well, if we have x to the 0, and y to the negative 1, I can rewrite that as x to the 0 over y to the 1 because this is a negative exponent. So that means that term goes in the denominator. So if we have x to the 0 and y to the 1, and we plug in x is equal to 4 and y is equal to 10, we'll get 4 to the 0 power over 10 to the first power. Now 10 to the first power is just 10, and then 4 to the 0, remember any number other than 0, to the 0 power it's just equal to 1. So this expression simplifies down to 1 tenth. Now let's see how we can use these rules to simplify our expressions. Here we don't have any values for x or y, but we just want to rewrite these with positive integer exponents. So if we have 2 times x to the minus 3, this is the same as 2 times x to the minus 3, and remember when you have a negative exponent, that means this term goes in the denominator. So this is the same as 2 times 1 over x cubed, or 2 over x cubed. Let's look at our next example. Here we have x to the minus 4 divided by y to the minus 2. Now both of these have negative exponents, which means both of these are going in the denominator. So this is the same as x to the minus fourth times one over y to the minus two. Now if I put this x with its negative exponent in the denominator, this is the same as one over x to the fourth. And we're gonna multiply that by one over y to the minus two, but y to the minus two needs to go in the denominator as well. 
except it's already in the denominator. So this is 1 over 1 over y squared. Now when you have 1 over 1 over, you can rewrite this as 1 over x to the fourth times y squared over 1. So whenever you have a negative exponent in the denominator, you can just move it up to the numerator. So our simplified expression then would be y squared over x to the fourth. And that completes the tutorial on integer exponents.